Thank you for the invitation. Uh, my name is uh, Su Song Simon Zhou. Uh, we also have our talented student, uh, Jiawei J. Lu, uh, originally coming from Southeast University. Uh, today, uh, we are very proud and uh, uh, having a lot of fun to present uh, the recent research results. The title of our presentation is Automated Vehicle Modeling Rising with Digital Twin. And we try to show the pathway for us to transform the connection between open data researchers and the city planners. In this implementation, uh, I will have the first introduction and then followed by uh, a real life demonstration by Jiawei. As we all know recently that the uh, evolution of digital twins Coming from 1980s, uh, we had this computer-driven simulation. And then in the year of 2000, simulation-based uh, system design becomes a fancy name of the digital twin. Recently, that a lot of uh, tech companies try to use a digital twin to show uh, nice features of our uh, virtual system in comparison to our uh, real-life system. In this talk, we are touch base on the background of the digital twin. We will offer a very brief introduction on the different tools in our open specification GMMS modeling community. This is followed by a real life demonstration of using multi resolution modeling uh, by uh, Java. And uh, this also followed by my closing remark on analytical models for bridging the gaps in MRM. The questions to be addressed uh, in this research is how we can build the prototype of the digital twin system for the smart city community, how we encourage the collaboration between different industry partners, researchers, planners, and engineers. Can we leverage the existing open source model and open data to enable decision making for the better intelligence? Number three, we want to also answer today is, can we build an open source high fidelity multimodal simulator that we can mimic the real life and uh, with a complex interaction? Finally, as a researcher, we want to offer the theoretical thought, how to bridge the gap on these cross resolution modeling domain from the different scales of the system. Okay, so, Start with, with the open data specification. In particular, we will show you we have different level of macro level, micro cell based mesh layer. And uh, we will have this uh, MISO layer in the middle to show you the connection from theoretical uh, in internal consistency and uh, the way we link a very large scale system all together. We have been doing this uh, digital twin or the simulation development for a number of years. This presents significant challenges, as we can see on the right. There are many components in our uh, traditional system. Sensor data, static traffic planning model, dynamic traffic assignment model, uh, car falling based simulation, signal optimization. So how we can connect all this together requires us to have a very systematic thinking and how to maintain the consistency between different objectives, decision-making and execution sequence. This requires a very systematic way to build the foundation. So this is why, thanks to the support by Federal Highway, we have been building the data hub concept for the smart city digital twin. In the middle, we have our inventory of all the data and uh, the sensor data, big data, the demand side models will be all connected to this data hub using some certain standard. Good news is starting from last year, uh, Federal Highway USDOT has been introducing general modeling network specification, GAMS, to our community. So you can see that along this of the planners to design this specification uh, organized by the Zypher Foundation. You can see the contact person, uh, Scott Smith from USDOT VOP Center. And uh, in this specification, they cover not just node link structure, it has different layers. 
as you can see at link layer, you can uh, the, describe the movement, signal timing. When you go to lane level, level, you can try to specify the different type of uh, pedestrian uh, pedestrian facilities. You can uh, look at you know, many detailed representation along this way. Uh, I just give a very simple introduction to the OS and GMS package as a first package adopting this standard, uh, st uh, standard and the specification. OpenStreetMap is an open source data website providing all the free downloads. I want to just um, uh, mention that the OS into GMS pattern package has quite popular in our research community and it has been downloaded by more than 16 times and is still increasing. Another package is how we can generate the demand based on the grid. And uh, we have a number of key developers along this line, Anjun Li, uh, An Tai Wang, and uh, Tai Vi Kin uh, from our ASU. And uh, we, as, as this uh, international community here, we try to uh, implement a four-step process, but based on the grid of the uh, 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 GIS system as, a, as opposed to the traditional uh, TA, TAZ or traffic analysis zone system. Number three, we have our uh, Professor Milan from University of Wyoming, Milan Zavakovich, and uh, he developed a signal timing optimization tool. And in particular, his tool, his Excel based tool, can be used to import the existing sync call UTDF format into our specification of the GAMS. Okay. In the kernel of this uh, simulation optimization, we have uh, Dr. Peyton Lee, former ASU graduate uh, in 2017, he's an uh, operations research analyst at the Norfolk Southern. Uh, he contributed path for JMS uh, in terms of the static travel assignment, short space calculation using this specification. And we also have our connection uh, thanks to the support of the Dustin Carlino, and uh, he used AB3 as a game-based uh, simulation tool to simulate the community-oriented uh, scenario. And uh, he has a long list of the plantation to promote this smart planning, digital twin, and open data specification. So our long-term goal, as you can see, is to integrate demand supply element all together. In summary, A is a network, so we build the conversion from OS into GMS. B is the demand supply data specification. And the C is a simulation. D is uh, something we are more interested in. Here is a DLC to maintain the consistent multi resolution demand supply based uh, representation and the optimization. So I want to just play a very quick video on the simulation tool as a part of our development process, and then this will follow by the Java's introduction on the key network specification. Okay, in this one minute video, I'm going to play here. What you can see is a DDI divergent diamond interchange. We have the mesh in the underlying network here. We have the Google satellite image, and we use the Nesta interface as a visualization to play second by second, or more precisely 0 0.1 second by 0 0.1 second trajectory. We have the different type of the vehicles following the simplified car following model by uh, Dr. Gordon Noor. And you can see there's a long uh, snake, uh, there's a long truck representing a potential use of is a couple of vehicles or connected automated vehicles um, uh, in this uh, in this uh, specification. We have the traffic signal lights being represented at the cell level, and uh, in this divergent diamond interchange, we can show the flexibility for us to change the direction of the link and uh, try to um, have a better design and the build before uh, essentially this a uh, five million dollar uh, real life project. And uh, in this tool, we maintain the consistency between the traffic flow model and the simplified car flow model. The reaction time, free flow speed, jam density can be all consistent uh, linked to the simplified kinematic wave model developed also by Dr. Gordon Luo. So now, you know, uh, when you try to look at the fancy animation, you will ask the question, 
how we be, we can build this network quickly, and how we can have the multi resolution uh, representation. Now I turn the uh, emphasis to uh, Java's presentation. Hi, uh, my name is Jay, and uh, I am going to introduce two of our two of our open source tools. The first one is OSM to GNS, which is used to obtain microscopic network from OpenStreetMap. And uh, the second one is net to cell which is used to build multi-resolution networks. Uh, we have released these two tools to PIPI. Users can install them in Python using pip command. We also uploaded them to our GitHub. Uh, users can obtain the source code of them uh, in GitHub website. Uh, until now, OSM to GNS has over 26,000 downloads. Uh, why do we need OSM to GNS? Uh, first, let me introduce what is uh, OSM to GNS. In the name of the package, uh, OSM means OpenStreetMap, and uh, GMNS represents the general modeling network specification, uh, which defines a common human and the machine readable format for sharing uh, road network files. And uh, we will introduce it in detail later. Two means TO2. Therefore, what OSM to GNS does is producing standardized network files from OpenStreetMap for sharing, collaborating, modeling, and the researching purpose. Uh, in these slides, we also show why we cannot directly use OpenStreetMap and why we are developing OSM to GNS in the existence of OSM NX. Uh, OpenStreetMap is a free open source editable uh, map website that, that can provide free downloads. Uh, OSM to GNS as a data conversion tool can directly convert the OpenStreetMap data to node and link network files in GMNS format. Uh, users can convert and uh, model drivable, workable, railway, or airway networks in, uh, with a single line of Python code. Uh, the, G, the general modeling uh, network specification, GMNS, defines a common a human and a machine readable format for sharing routable uh, road network files. Uh, it is designed to be used in multi-model static and dyna dynamic transportation planning and uh, operation models. Uh, the basic data elements in GNNS includes node, link, ge geometry, and the zone. We can find a detailed introduction of GMNS format at this uh, GitHub link at the bottom of this slide. Uh, we compare OSM to GNS with the existing tools uh, from these four aspects. First, a uh, network produced by OSM to GNS uh, is suitable, and uh, different network types are supported. The biggest feature of OSM to GNS is that it is mainly designed for our transportation community. It has many special designed functions that can help facilitate the transportation transportation modeling process. Uh, for example, it has uh, network uh, simplification, uh, intersection consolidation, and also point of interest POI functions. Uh, we have some examples here to show how to use OSM to GNNS. Uh, the first is to download OpenStreetMap data from OpenStreetMap database. We have an online document to show uh, this step here. Uh, if we want to quickly get a network, we just need to uh, run two lines of Python code, uh, read OSM files uh, first, then output to CSV files. Uh, OSM GGNS will take care of all the parsing tasks. Uh, complex intersections in OpenStreetMap are always modeled using multiple nodes, uh, which is not easy to use, especially in uh, traffic simulation tasks. Uh, OSM to GNS spots intersection 
uh, consolidation with a single line of code, OSMNGNS will automatically consolidate intersections into one node. Uh, movement information in OpenStreetMap is always missing, but it is very important in uh, network modeling tasks. OSMNGNS can quickly generate movement files uh, for intersections based on intersection topologies. Uh, OSM to GNS also support different network types and uh, point of interest POI. Uh, so, I'd, so that multi model and uh, demand modeling can be easily uh, conducted. Uh, we show the network around the ASU Tempe campus here. The first one is network with point of interest. And uh, OSM to GNS can also. Uh, help users automatically connect POIs with transportation networks so that the travel demands can be released to networks to finish trans, uh, traffic simulation and the traffic modeling. Uh, more examples can be found at this uh, link. Uh, the second tool is a uh, net to sell uh, for any given networks that meets the GMNS standard. Uh, net to sell helps users to automatically generate multi-resolution network transportation network uh, to accommodate different modeling needs. Uh, uh, to generate multi-resolution networks, only two lines of Python code is needed. Uh, net to sell will automatically generate multi-resolution networks based on the input macroscopic network. Uh, finally, I would like to show the capability of our uh, tools. By using ASU research computing facilities, we can generate the entire U.S. driving network from OpenStreetMap with 20 million nodes. Uh, users can find this data set at this GitHub link. I also uh, use a demo, ne uh, demo network a simple intersection, I would like to show uh, different layers of network produced by OpenStreetMap and net to sell. Uh, in QGIS, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, normal a uh, normal intersection uh, with four legs. And this is a background picture from Google Map. So we have four layers of networks. The first one is macroscopic network produced by OSM to GNS. OS, uh, as you can see, uh, this uh, complex intersection is represented by four nodes. So in, by using intersection consolidation function in OSM to GNS, we can automatically combine these four nodes into one node to represent this intersection. So this is the macroscopic network after the consolidation. Another is another layer is mesoscopic layer and also microscopic layer produced by net to cell. In net uh, in mesoscopic layer, uh, net to cell will generate movements, which is very uh, useful to model traffic signals. And uh, so these are the movement links. If we uh, show the, um, if we show the movement string, of these movement links, uh, net to cell will automatically generate these movement strings to help users to model like traffic signals. The last layer is microscopic layer. In this layer, uh, we build a, a land-based cell network, land by land, land by land cell-based network, uh, which is uh, used for detailed traffic simulation modeling or optimization. So that's all for our two open source tools. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Charlie.
Okay, thank you, Jarvis. A great introduction. Now I'm back to the topic number three, how we maintain the internal consistency for this multi-resolution model, particularly for the large scale network. I want to just raise your awareness in the traffic flow theory, the car falling model can be integrated to produce the steady state aggregated Markov speed density relationship. And as we all know that to maintain this integrated network, demand supply elements for the smart city is always our dream. So our long-term goal here is we try to integrate open source development, multi-resolution modeling, simulation and optimization using the mesh network we just introduced here. And then finally, we can uh, provide the decision support for the large scale system. And uh, as you might know that uh, my team at ASU has been developing DTA Live for a number of years, and we have many applications. But the challenge here is we have a very complicated system to deal with and how we can get the consistency across different layers and how we can use the theoretically uh, some theory and to support our decision making. This is one of the key challenge. So I want to just follow the, uh, the important philosophy by Einstein. And uh, we want to have a system simple, but not simpler. And we want to simplify the complexity using our theoretical models. So as I just mentioned previously, the derivation of consistency between Markov flow density relationship or speed density relationship and the car flow relationship can be easily shown here, introduced by uh, 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 the, the GM model and with the connection to the Greenberg model. Okay. And recently, and I want to mention that thanks to uh, Qixiu Chen and the professor Ziyuan Liu, and we are developing a set of S-shaped three-parameter parsimonious traffic stream model, which can pr produce the consistent QKV relationship with the underlying car falling model. So due to the time limit, I'm not going to the detail, you can look at the published part B paper online. The second building block is the volume delay function. Audience may say that the volume delay function could be a very traditional, very old engineering practice. What we try to show here is by using the fully based approximation, we will be able to understand the, the volume delay function in much more uh, details. And I just simply want to mention that uh, Dr. Gordon Nua has another very important discovery in 1982 by introducing a quadratic inflow rate, land of the T, as a uh, polynomial function, he was able to show that the connection between the fluid model and the uh, VDF function. And what we did recently is try to upgrade the quadratic inflow function to a cubic third order inflow function. So by using all those tools, we are able to get this analytical approximation into a differentiable programming framework using the computational graph support. So uh, this whole philosophy by integrate simulation and analytical approximation together, this becomes our current research agenda, deep learning based simulation, traffic simulation. The DL scene has another way to interpret that is the DL is a tradition that have been developed a DTA light. So we try to apply these kind of dynamic DTA methodologies into the detailed representation. And by using our space-time network discretization, we will be able to connect the car falling model, kinematic wave model, and uh, uh, to do this headway optimization. This is also produced uh, thanks to the collaboration with the multiple researchers here. Uh, uh, we have published a paper in 2017 on the dynamic programming-based multi-vehicle headway control. Thank you. So this is the end of our presentation. You're welcome to visit our GitHub website, ASU Transit AI Lab. Thank you. Bye.